microphone I'm on it hallelujah who knows what happened then? Thank you, Lord, for your glorious goodness today. God, I thank you that, um, that in this moment, uh, you won't fail. And, uh, and in times where we feel like life is going to pot and, uh, and we're struggling and we're worried about what's going to happen next, Lord, we can put our faith and trust in you. Lord, we can put our whole, uh, our whole being uh, upon you and say, Lord, will you carry us? Uh, Lord, I thank you for the seasons where we can look back and go, you know what? I was really struggling uh, back then and, uh, and I can see how you picked me up and carried me. I love that, um, that poem, isn't it, of, a, of the footprints in the sand of the whole, I've only seen one set of footprints and then God's all like, oh, they were mine. I was carrying you the whole way sort of thing. And I love that idea, that, that focus on the fact that, you know, it, as we look back, and we can see you carried us through that and then we, you carried us through that and then we struggled over there and you carried us through that and we all come through it and all things work to the good of those that love the Lord and I thank you for that Jesus because you're good and you're wonderful and you're strong when we're weak. Lord, I pray today that as we continue our service, um, I pray that you would be here in a special way with us because, Lord, we need you real bad really. Like, um, all this stuff that we do in here, we sing songs and we, we do nice things and it's all lovely things and, and, we, and we see each other and we, and we sort of um, have tea and coffee and that and like, uh, we, there's, there's really no point in being here if you're not here, God, because um, we can have coffee at the local cafe, really. We can go to the pub or whatever. We can all be together anywhere, but this is the place where we're allowed to worship you out, out loud, you know. And So in this moment, God, I, I want to pray, Lord, that as we enter into the rest of our service just now, God, um, you would you'd do something here and you'd be here. Um, you'd be here in a, in a sort of really real way, God. Lord, that, um, that we'd walk out them doors later on and we'd go, I'm really glad I went to church today. You really felt God's presence or, or more than that. Like Your presence is lovely, but sometimes it's just nice to have more than that, isn't it? I'm really glad I went to church today because God spoke to me personally. I heard his voice. I felt his whisper. He came close. I could almost feel him on my skin. It was more than a feeling, actually. It was more than an emotion. It was like God was in the room and he affirmed me by coming close to me. Lord, let it be even more than that, Lord. Let it be the case that some of us experience your embrace today, a physical embrace, not a spiritual one, but a physical embrace, that today we might feel your hand come towards us and touch us. We might hear your voice out loud, not that we hear voices all the time, but that your voice would be loud and vocal and, and we would hear it out loud God we want more of you I guess is what I'm trying to say we need more of you to Jesus I pray you'd manifest your presence here Holy Spirit would you help us to to give Jesus all of the honour and glory and the reverence that he deserves today convict us where we're being a little bit naughty and forgetting about God Convict us when we're thinking about ourselves and our issues. When we're supposed to be here to worship you, almighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Help me preach your word as well, because that would be good news, because um, it's a bit boring when I do it by myself, really, isn't it? Um, glorious. Happy days. You can all take a seat if you like. Um, I laugh. I kid. You're already sitting down. Lovely. How are you all doing all right? Yeah, we're good. How's your Sunday? So far, how was your Saturday? Anyone have a good Saturday? You had a good Saturday, so you came to you came to the Abba night thingy, and it was good. Yeah, yeah. Your granddaughter loved it. That's good news. That's, what else did you do yesterday? Anything nice? I had just some to visit. That's cool. Lovely. Happy days. Nice. 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 Um, our Abba tribute night was uh, was was a lovely thing. Um, not that many people rocked up. It was about sixty odd people. Most of them were were totally unchurched. But there was some people from church there. And uh, as I was um, as I was telling everyone my my testimony 
and explaining why we do the things that we do. Um, it's really interesting that all of the Christians started chatting and uh, all of the unchurched folks sat there and listened intently. One of them even got up and moved away from the Christians so they could hear me better. It is terrible, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely terrible. They should be ashamed of themselves, shouldn't they? No, it wasn't April. <laughs> April was behaving. April was serving. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's so funny. I was looking around and I was literally like, so it's, there's a group of Christians that have been quite loud. Um, I don't even know what I was saying. I was, I was like, that's... Anyway, uh, and, then, uh, and then I looked and there was like some people on the front row and like a little chair sort of thing just there and, and that, that, they were really cool and, and they were listening and they, and they were like engaging and joining in and then, and then there was some other people over in that corner and they were like sort of listening and then one of, my, one of our volunteers, who volunteers on a Tuesday at Birchwood, um, he, uh, he was near the Christians and so he got up and walked around the back of everyone else so he could, so he could actually hear what I was saying, I know, naughty Christians. Um, anyway, never mind, obviously missed the memo. Um, you were going to say something, Doc. I went in a kayak with my daughter. You went in a kayak with your daughter? Very lovely. Down with them? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, lovely. Happy days. So, so is, that, is that just around the back of here that you went in? Yeah, the river, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Happy days. That's cool. Uh, right near the town centre as well. So, uh, the, I'm guessing you didn't hit any, like, um, uh, trolleys. <laughs> <laughs> shopping trolleys. Was that mucky? Wasn't that mucky? It was quite nice, was it? it? To be fair, Lincoln is a really tidy city, isn't it? You know, like, um, every, every time I go back to Northampton, I drive in thinking, you could mow the grass, goodness me. You know what I mean? Like, um, <laughs> I feel like, you know, or sweep the roads or something. And then round here, you get like road sweepers going at the paths and everything, don't you? It's really nice. The council really look after the place. Must be because they upped our tax by another 3%, which, by the way, I don't mind that at all. I'm like, I'll pay more tax if it means getting the like, leaves swept. I'm well up for that. But yeah, yeah, they do take care of Lincoln really well, don't they? It's a beautiful city to live in. The Brayford's really nice as well, isn't it? And did you know there's a Five Guys opening soon? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. See, that's what should be on Facebook. Yeah, not just on Facebook Marketplace. Um, <laughs> Israel said to me the other day, oh, I joined Facebook for the wrong reason. And then my, in my head, I thought, dating. And then he went, oh, no, for Marketplace. And uh, yeah, so, yeah, bless you. Um, I, I buy stuff from Marketplace all the time. In fact... Most of the stuff you see around here is off Marketplace, you know, so, yeah, it's good stuff. That pool table's from Marketplace, got it for 180 quid. Come on, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah, it's all right. Um, <laughs> it's all right for 180 quid, isn't it? Come on. But yeah, anyway, for whatever reason you're on Facebook, if you're on there right now and you're watching, joining us, uh, why don't you give us a little share? Um, sharing us means sharing the good news of Jesus, which is good news, isn't it? Um, and uh, we always talk about Jesus here on a, on a Sunday morning, don't we? Has anyone noticed that? No, Liam says no. Uh, does, what do other people talk about? No, they don't talk about me. Should I eat div? Okay, um, I can say that, can I? I can call him a div. Liam, by the way, got the Dancing Queen Award at ABBA last night. Um, I have a video, if anyone would like to see it. Uh, you know, send me a little... Yeah, you want to see that vid? Yes, come on. I was... You know what? I, I, unfortunately, I was too busy playing pool with him. He distracted me earlier on. But I was thinking I might upload it and we could show it on a big screen earlier on. But I know, I missed the opportunity. But Dancing Queen, you know, I'm not even sure what sort of dance moves he was doing uh, in the beginning. But he was doing some dance moves off to the side and the lady called him out from the stage and asked him to come into the middle of the dance floor. And then apparently some... Are we allowed to say cougars in church? Grabbed hold of him? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, it was a good night. We had a good night, didn't we? It was great. Um, oh, oh, what are we doing? What do I say? Oh, I'm going to get the sack. Okay, um, we're, <laughs> we're in John chapter 5, if you'd like to join me. Um, I was in a lecture last week. No, not last week. The week before that, I was in a lecture for my master's. I'm doing a master's in theology, everyone. Um, you, you can never stop learning. I love learning. I love digging deeper into the scriptures. And uh, when I've been doing my master's, one of the things I've noticed is that the scriptures sort of are opened up to me a whole lot more. And so um, I actually wrote some notes. I know. And I thought, I'm stealing that. I'm stealing that and I'm going to use that one day. And then last night I thought, oh, I'm preaching tomorrow, so I better have a look in my Bible and see what I'm up to. And uh, I read this. Therefore, Jesus answered and was saying to them, truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, these things the son also does. In the same way, um, well, in the same way, 
Full stop. <laughs> for, the, for the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself is doing. And the Father will show him greater works than these so that you will be amazed. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so the Son also gives life to whom he wishes. For not even the Father judges anyone, but has given all judgment to the Son, so that all will honour the Son, just as they honour the Father. The one who does not honour the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. What is Jesus saying just here? He's basically saying, I and the Father, we are the same thing. We're the same team. We're the same everything. We are both God. And I don't do anything without seeing the Father do it. And in fact, um, I don't even do anything that the Father isn't in, essentially. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So essentially, in I've said essentially twice now, three times. I'm going to have to stop saying it because I'm going to get on my nerves. Um, in Scripture and in Roman culture and in Jewish culture, when a son, when a father had a son, eventually that father would, uh, would say of the son, certainly in Roman culture this was the case, the father would take a son about the age of 15 into the, into the public square, you know, like the village square. You might say like, uh, where's the village square around here? Probably Turner Avenue. But anyway, um, maybe that little roundabout over there might be our little village square. Um, I could guess that, the, you know, there's, um, the, in town there's like a sort of marketplace. You can imagine that being the marketplace, the, the village square of Lincoln or the town square of Lincoln and what a father would do is he'd take his son into that space and he'd say of him this is my son in whom I love and then what would happen is he would give him a ring called a signet ring which is basically the father's signature on the ring and in doing so he would give the son all of his authority and so the son then would be able to carry on doing what the father does from day to day so the son only does what the father does and so he has all of his business all of his authority and and all of his say so does that make sense yeah. So when there's a check that needs signing for the for the business that they run, um, he puts his stamp on it, and it's as good as saying, "This is my father's stamp of approval. You can have the dosh." Yeah. Yeah. And so we know that in Jesus' story, Jesus had that same moment with Father God when when loads and loads of people were around and loads and loads of people were being baptized. Jesus was baptized, and then the Father did exactly the same thing. This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased, in whom I love. Right? It's whom I'm well pleased, isn't it? Not whom I love. But anyway, um, that's another place. But at that point, then the Holy Spirit comes down, the seal of God. And Jesus starts doing the work of the Father if he hasn't been already. But at that moment is the moment where officially in Roman culture and in Jewish culture, Jesus then is essentially, sorry my bad said it again, is doing the work of the Father and is sort of like the head of the business in the same way as the Father is the head of the business. Yes? Got it? Cool. So, we're talking about the Trinity today. You guys know, you, you've heard of the Trinity. Most of you should have heard of the Trinity by now. Some people think that the Trinity is a bit like, um, it's a bit like water. So you get like, Holy Spirit is like the vapor in water. So he is, uh, he is um, steam. And then, uh, and then the Father might be uh, water, for example. And then the Son might be ice. And so they're all the same thing, but they come down in different in different like uh, ways, and we see them in different ways. That's what some people call. Uh, so some people think the Trinity is all about. That's called oneness, oneness Pentecostalism. If you're if you're a Pentecostal, but that's called oneness theology. Okay, it's where they're all one person, but we don't believe that as as um, reformed. Uh, Pentecostals, Reformed Evangelicals, if you like the term evangelical. I'm not too sure after, the, after American Evangelicals have given us a bad name. Um, but anyway, um, we don't believe that. We don't believe that they're all one person. We believe that they're of one type and of one team, but we don't believe that they're all one person. Does that make sense? Am I speaking sense today? Okay. Tell me if you want me to slow down um, because I don't want to be here all day preaching. I've got a lot of information. They're not a hive mind. Any of you guys watch a bit of um, 
Star Trek, and you guys in Star Trek, Liam's in Star Trek, I'm in Star Trek, we do a bit of Star Trek every now and again. Um, I'm currently watching the Picard series, anyone into that? You need to get into it, it's really good stuff, there's so much of it, you know, way more than Star Wars. Anyway, um, he's shaking his head now, he's like, no, 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 no. Anyway, um, in Star Trek, there's this group called, or a race, sort of, called the Borg. And the Borg have a hive mind, okay? So it's almost like um, all of their minds are connected together, and so they sort of make decisions together, but really there's one queen of the Borg who tells everyone what to do, okay? And so in a hive mind, everyone sort of puts their thoughts in and they're all sort of chatting all the time together. Some people think that the Trinity is a bit like that, but the Trinity doesn't have a hive mind. They're three individual people with three different minds. They're not one mind with three entities within the mind. They're separate minds, okay? I'm just highlighting some facts that you might not know. Some people wonder about the Trinity and wonder how it all works. They're not a hive mind. They're not like uh, all the same person who we see in different forms. You know, like in India and stuff, they have, uh, have Hinduism. And in Hinduism, there's, uh, there's one big creator God and, uh, and, and essentially loads of other gods that come under him. And, uh, and then that one creator God sort of expresses himself in lots of different ways. That's not what we believe as Christians. We believe that there are three persons of the Trinity who make up one team called God. Almost like, and I always say, a bit like Man United, who are one force, a force to be reckoned with this season, I might say. Come on, they're doing well, aren't they? One force, 11 individuals on the pitch. All have different jobs to do, but they have one goal, score more goals than the other team. Yeah? You get it? But they don't all have the same brain which speaks to itself. What I'm trying to say to you is that God is not schizophrenic. <laughs> okay? Because I remember when I first started thinking about this stuff, I wondered that question. You know, anyone else wonder that stuff? Do you guys really think about this stuff deeply? Please tell me you do. I, I love scripture. I, I love God. And, and when I think about him, I like to think really deeply. I sort of try and... Can I just say, I'm, I have some narcissistic tendencies. I do as a pastor. And so, um, and so I like to try and guess what people are thinking. That's, you know, that's a narcissistic tendency. Do you know that? Where you think, it is. It is that's, that's, that's what narcissism is. It's part of narcissism. You, 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 you think you know what other people are thinking. And then you also believe that they know what you're thinking as well. So you don't communicate properly because you think they know what you want them to do. So then... When they don't buy your flowers on Mother's Day, you suddenly get upset. Like, you should have known that I wanted flowers. You ever, come on, has anyone ever said, you should have known that I wanted? Has anyone ever said that before? That's a narcissistic tendency. I'm a little bit like that, and I'm constantly thinking, I wonder what God's thinking. I wonder what's going on in his brain. You know what I mean? I wonder if he's one person with split personalities. No, no one ever thought that? Wow, crazy. I really think about these things. I really think deeply about them. And I wonder. And then I have to go out and find out. And then I'm finding out and I'm learning stuff. And then eventually you get to the point where you learn that God isn't schizophrenic. He's three people that make up one team. Liam spilled his drink. Um. <laughs> Drive by, I know. My bad. Um. <laughs> you know these things that you just notice. You know, at the corner of your eye. Um. So God isn't a hive mind. God isn't one person who shows himself in lots of different forms. That's not who he is. He's three distinct persons who all have, Jesus is saying just here, the same authority. Interesting, isn't it? This is what I learned in my master's. This is one of the things that I wrote down. Are you ready? I wrote this down. It is a lovely thing. All three are part of all decisions. So they never do anything without the others. Right? So when it comes to, let's say, for example, in our house, um, we was watching a program yesterday. Me and my wife were watching a program about dogs and people getting dogs from some place. Anyway, um, and, uh, and this family were on there and, uh, and the lady who was interviewing the family turns around and says, so who gets the final decision? Right? 
And then all the family turn around and say, well, we all get to have a say, but dad gets a final decision. Yeah? He gets a final say. And then Laura said, it's a bit like that in our house. We, we, we discuss together, we, we, we debate together, and then we, we say what we want, and then, but eventually it all comes down to, you know, dad gets a final say, which is sometimes good, sometimes not. Oftentimes, I abdicate responsibility, and then if it goes wrong, I blame it on Liam. Um, uh, but <laughs> I kid. Oh, sorry, bro, I've I seen you over there, and now started, I can't stop. Um, but, <laughs> but, but some people think that God is the same. So the son wants this and the spirit wants this, but the father has the final say. But actually, all three always want the same thing. Because they are so like each other, they're so the same, that they all want the same thing all of the time. It's interesting, isn't it? So, I'm not sure about you, but when I was growing up, if I went to mum and dad with something, actually, no, that's a lie. I didn't live with my mum and dad, never met my dad ever, okay? Never met him. Um, so, let's just let's, let's be a bit more honest. I live with my grandma and granddad, okay? So, um, so, if I ever wanted something, let's say, for me, because I'm a right little fatty, it was always a lasagna, okay? So, um, so <laughs> I'd, I'd go to my nan and I'd go, Nan, I want a lasagna, and she would go, well, you know what to do? Do a job and you can have a lasagna because I'll give you a quid for doing a job. Like hoover the stairs, get a quid. Lasagna's a quid. Pop around the shop, go buy a lasagna. Come back home. I want another lasagna. Do the dusting. <laughs> I was, uh, when I say I was a right fatty, I mean like, I, was, I was constantly eating. I want another lasagna. Do the dusting. Get a quid. Go around the shop, buy another lasagna. Come home, cook lasagna, eat the lasagna. Oh, I want another. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, but what would happen is I'd go to my nan and I'd say, Nan, I want a lasagna. So go, well, you know what to do, do the dusting. All right? Uh, all right, then, fair enough. Um, give me two minutes. Granddad. <coughs> Granddad. Um, I, really, I really want a lasagna. Oh, Darren, are you hungry? Yeah, oh, you're a growing boy. Here's a quid. Right? Yeah? And so what, what children do, right, is they play parents off one another, don't they? You ever notice this? Sometimes they're really naughty and they try to split parents in order to really get what they want. I want to go ice skating. I never wanted to go ice skating. Just scared I might break something. I've never broken a bone. So I don't want to put it, put it to the risk. You know what I mean? I just, you know, I just don't want to do that. Um, but I want to go, let's say kid wants to go ice skating. Goes to mum. Mum want to go ice skating. Mum says, no, not going ice skating. Too dangerous. Might break something. Oh, in that case, dad... You know what mum said about you earlier on? She said that you've been eating too much. By the way, I really like to go ice skating. Can I go ice skating? What did your mum say? Oh, mum said that you're too fat. Oh, what? Well, I'm going to prove her wrong. Let's go ice skating. I can skate. I'm not too fat. Right? You get the idea? God's not like that. You can't split God. <laughs> because God has one idea between the three of them, they all think the same way and they all want the same goal. They are all on the same journey and want you on a certain journey as well. So they all want of you the same thing. They're all going to tell you the same thing. So it would be crazy if someone said to me, Father said such and such a thing to me the other day. And then someone else comes up to me and says, Holy Spirit said this to me the other day and the two collide. Right? And I see it in church all the time. I see it in church all the time. Someone will say, I think God is sending us in this direction. Or, thus saith the Lord, God says we're going in this direction, right? And if someone else comes up to me and says, Holy Spirit is telling me right now, I hear the Spirit of the Lord say that God wants us to sit still for a little while. And I'm like, well, who's right? Because they're not in two minds. They're in the same mind. They both think the same way. They both want the same thing. And someone else will come up to me and say, Jesus said. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, God's being split three ways here. What's going on? The truth is, some people aren't hearing God. Right? Or, or they may be hearing God, but it's for them, not the congregation. Right? Do we agree? Because God might be saying something to me that is not saying to us as a church. Right? But at the same time, sometimes he says something to us as a whole church. But we need to discern 
what God is saying to us as individuals and what God is saying to us as a church, the royal us. So when someone says, we need to go and switch out Urban Wave from Mablethorpe to Skegness so there's more space, then they might be used in the singular we, or the individual we, or they might be, they, they might be using the royal we. You've all heard about the royal we. Yeah? It means like the all of us we. Right, so if, not a, it, means, it means a big we. All right? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh dear. We need to be careful what we say is God and what we say is for everyone and what we say is for individuals. Because God is not schizophrenic. God is not divided. He's not split. Or should I say they are not split? Because they are one. They're not split. They're all in the same mindset and they all want the same thing. It's a bit like, anyone into politics? Some of you guys are into politics. In politics, you have what is called a whip, okay? And a whip is someone whose job it is to make sure that as many people as possible from their party all, join, all, all, all come along to the vote. So let's say next week we're voting on whether we should rejoin Europe, okay? Um, that's really attractive to some folks, really less attractive to others. But let's say that next week Parliament votes whether we rejoin Europe because everything's gone Pete Tong, right? And then what they do is if they want to win, they get their whip to go around all of their people and say, this is what you need to vote on. Everyone should vote on this. This is a core priority of our group. Okay, We are all voting for this thing and everyone needs to turn up. There should be no excuse for not turning up for this one because it's super important. Okay, In the Godhead, in the Trinity... There's not one person who holds a whip. All three hold the whip together. All three decide what direction we're going in and in which way we're going to vote. And all three always turn up. So some of us have a, have a view or Trinitarian view that Father is the main authority. Who thinks that? Some people out there might think that. Father is the main authority, right? Some people actually believe that. But this is not the case. Because all three are equal in authority. Okay? Some might think, well, the son made the biggest sacrifice. The son made the biggest sacrifice. Anyone believe that? Because my Bible says that the father made the sacrifice. And that he sacrificed his son. And that they were in it together. Holy Spirit was there too, right? All three were in that decision when they made the decision to do that. All three were together when that happened. They all went to that place. Because they never do anything separately. If we have a truly Trinitarian view, then... All three are always in everything. So when Holy Spirit comes and does something right here, right now, what's happening is Father, Son and Spirit are all being here present with us. And they're all in the decision making and they all want us to go in the same direction. They're all, all for us. Yeah? Have I dispelled some thoughts that may have been a little bit array yet today? I hope I have. And I learned this stuff. Like, I, I knew it, but I didn't know it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, knew, I knew the, the core of it. I knew, I knew the sort of, I understood the outworking of it, sort of, but I didn't really understand it in its detail. And so today, as I'm allowed to, because that's what I've got to go to in my scripture, I thought I would regurgitate what I've learned to you guys. Isn't that nice of me? I know. I paid nine grand for it. You get it for free. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, come on. I think it's actually 11 grand. 
But what does this mean for us? What does it mean for us as individuals when we're dealing with God and when we're praying? Let me turn over my notes. <laughs> I know, there's a whole other page. Um, what does this mean for us? First of all, we can't split mum and dad. <laughs> or rather, son and dad. Son and dad. Son and dad and spirit. We can't split them. I said that already. So if you've got a habit of doing so, let's stop. All three love us the same. And so if you happen to have a connection that is really good with Jesus, because maybe a brother is easier to connect with than a father. Certainly if you're like me, and daddy was just never around, you know, like, I never really had a dad. My granddad was the closest thing I had to a dad. And I lived with him for like eight years and then, bless him, he died of cancer, you know. I just went off the rails and I was already off the rails in all honesty. I just went further off the rails and yeah, moved out and uh, acted a fool. But I had a granddad. I had a dad sort of figure for like eight years or something. And so when it comes to connecting with Father God, I'll be honest with you, sometimes... I'm not, I just don't tend to, I don't really pray like, Father God, can I have this? Hey, Daddy, can I have that? I've never said Daddy before in my life until I met Jesus. You know what I mean? Other than to say, who's your Daddy? Sorry. Jokes. Um, but I just never really said that. Then all of a sudden, I met Jesus, and I'm like, connecting and then he's like by the way you do have a dad now you got God he's your dad actually it was a really big relief for me when I first realized that and it first sort of like like all that just sort of went oh and I was like oh my days I've got a dad you know and I have called him daddy a couple of times but the connection still isn't the same as what I connect with Jesus and I guess it's easier for me to connect with a brother because I've had lots of brothers lots of times. My uncle was probably the closest thing I had to a proper brother. I lived with him for like eight years. And uh, he's like four years older than me. And so he'd stick up for me sometimes. You know when, you know, when like, I would go home and I'd be in trouble with Nan and Pap, right? And then, and, then, uh, and then Jonathan would sort of like take the blame sometimes or he'd like, or he'd like sort of lie for me. Um, you, know, and it, no, you know, it's not really that late, is it? No, he hasn't been out with girls, you know, all those sorts of things, you know what I mean? Like, and, um, and, and he'd like, like, he'd be like a big brother to me, you know what I mean? And so I sort of always had brothers around. And so maybe I find it really easy to connect with Jesus on a brotherly level. Even though you're like, but you're not brothers. Well, I'm, he's the firstborn among many brothers, the Bible says, you know. So, so, so in, we're not his brother, like God, but we are sort of, anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like, we can understand, understand that a little bit more, couldn't we? But sometimes it's easier for us to connect with Jesus in that sort of way. Maybe, um, maybe family is really, really hard for you. And so connecting with Holy Spirit comes a lot easier to you. Because it's sort of like Holy Spirit is a far off, but it's sort of really close. Do you know what I mean? So he's not got a physical presence that I can touch and hold. And I don't see him, her, it having a physical, you know what I mean? And so in, a, in this TV show yesterday, there was this young lad, um, part of that family actually. Um, and uh, it's really interesting. He sort of stood and he just stood and looked at all these dogs that were in front of him. And, and, um, and there's this one dog just called White Label because they hadn't, their puppies hadn't named the dogs yet. There's one dog called White Label who's just sort of off to the side, just laying down by itself. And this son, um, this lad, was just sort of off by himself from the family as well. You know, and, and, and he, like, he sort of didn't really have much of a connection with people. And his dad said about him that he's a bit of an introvert, you know, and he, he doesn't really connect with people. He sort of needs a friend. And so that's why we come to get a dog, right? And then, and then like... The, the show continues and little kid over there is playing with like 10 puppies and the puppies are jumping all over him and mum's loving on that puppy over there and, and this, this young lad just kept on like looking over to this dog that was like all by itself laying down and not paying any attention to anyone. You see this young lad just looking over. You've got to watch it. I feel all emotional. Um, and, uh, and, and you can see like, like this connection that's so far off. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like 
hey, you're lonely. Hey, I'm lonely too. Please don't touch me, but can we be friends? <laughs> Anyone ever feel like that? I'm an introvert. I feel like that all the time. Let's be friends, but don't come near me, all right? Um, <laughs> and, and so if you're like that, then sometimes having a good connection with Holy Spirit is really easy because, you know, it's, Holy Spirit's not going to come and, like, hug me, you know? Do you know what I mean? Because he's spirit, and he didn't really do that, you know? And so it's a lot easier for me to connect with Holy Spirit in that sort of way. But the point is that whichever one you connect with, they all love you the same. And they all want the same for you. They are all totally for you. None of them are against you. That's cool, isn't it? So if you've got a really bad representation of dad on the earth, a dad who punishes, a dad who's angry, a dad who, you know, doesn't give you anything and hurts you, if that's your representation of fatherhood on the earth, then although you might not necessarily go too close to father in heaven because of your damaged relationship on earth, you can rest assured that Holy Spirit might get close to you and say, by the way, this dad is different to the dad that you've experienced. You might get Jesus as a, as a bit of a brother come round and like give you a little dig in the arm, you know, like, by the way, there's no dad's not against you. He's not, he's not ignoring you, by the way. We all think the same about you just, just now. Like, I'm your mate. Holy Spirit's really close to you. Dad's also really for you. He thinks the same as me. You know? Sometimes we need to understand this stuff. Here's another thing. I'll, I'm going to stop really soon, I promise. Um, unless you're having fun. Are you guys, out, are you guys all right? Yeah? Is anyone hit, like having God speak to them at the moment? Do you feel that's happening? That's nice. I feel like God's in this. They all want what's best for us. I can imagine that God is putting structures in place to help our lives be a little bit more structured and uh, structuring our eternity and putting things like gravity in place to keep our feet on the ground and, you know, that sort of stuff. I can imagine Father does a lot of structuring, you know. He sort of holds everything together, you know, like just brings it together, holds it together. I've always imagined a dad who sort of has this authority about him, you know? Do you know what I mean? It just sort of like helps you just to stay on an even keel. Because sometimes we could be a bit wacky, can't we? Sometimes our hurt can cause us or help us or encourage us to do stupid things, can't it? The sun shows us the way. The sun shows us the way. This book is full of areas where Jesus shows us how we should behave, the things we should say, even the things we should think. You know, the Bible says that we should think the same things as God thinks. We should think the same things that God thinks. Our mind, our mind should be almost melded with God's. Sorry, Star Trek again. We should be able to understand in some way where God is going and what God is doing. We should be trying to think like him so that the things that we do are the things that he would do. That's why Jesus says just here, you know, I only do what I see the Father doing. By the way, you should do the same. Jesus shows us the way. And the Spirit helps us on our journey, right? The Bible says that the Spirit is our closest friend, our closest companion. And that from time to time, he even speaks to the Father on our behalf. Which is really good news if you've got a really bad daddy relationship going on. Because sometimes I might do something bad, right? And then what I do is I might, because I've experienced a bad dad on earth, I then... I then, or maybe not even a bad dad, but one who's a little bit rough maybe, you know. Um, 
Because some dads aren't always bad, bad, are they? You know, like, I'm sure they're not, I don't think there's that many evil people. I think there's broken people, you know? But anyway, maybe you've experienced broken dad. And so when you do something wrong, you think, oh man, God's going to give me the slipper. You know, but then Holy Spirit says, don't worry, I'll speak to him on your behalf. Behalf. It's really cool, isn't it? Do you know what that's called? That's called tongues. That's when we speak in tongues. That's when Holy Spirit speaks to the Father on our behalf, you know? And he's like, oh, by the way, Darren doesn't know it, but he really needs you to, like, you know, fill his belly with food today because he's got a bit of a jippy tummy going on. He thinks that he needs some munch, but he doesn't realise he needs some munch. You know, um, Darren, you know what? Daddy, Darren is a typical bloke and refuses to go to the doctor because he thinks he's got to do it all himself because that's just what he's been brought up on, you know? If I don't do it myself, then no one's going to do it. So, Dad, would you, um, would you heal that thing in his foot for him? Because, because he's not going to ask you because he's a typical bloke. He's a broken one just like everyone else. Holy Spirit's good, right? If Holy Spirit was speaking on your behalf today, what, what do you think he'd say? Because, and it's not just that you might need healing, but, you know, sometimes it's heart stuff as well, isn't it? Or maybe, can you imagine, oh, the Bible doesn't say that Holy Spirit does this for us, but can you imagine if Holy Spirit confesses your sins for you on your behalf to the Father? Oh, I'm, the Bible doesn't say he does that. It says that we sort of have to do that. But I'm just saying, like, like it doesn't say that he doesn't do that. You know when you've... Um, you've been speaking in tongues for a little while and then you're, you're sort of like, in the back of your mind, you're, you're thinking something, but it's not that you'd want to say it. You know? And then you're speaking in tongues and then sometimes I think... I reckon Holy Spirit just said that for me because I needed to say it. But I didn't say it out loud. And sometimes it is a sorry. Sometimes it is, God, I, I'm really lonely at the moment. You know? It's really lonely being a bloke. I'm not sure what it is for you ladies. Are you, you ladies get lonely? Yeah? It's just a lonely world, isn't it? Stupid Facebook. It's all Facebook's fault, isn't it? We go on there instead of hanging out together, don't we? And work, stupid work. Who wants to work anyway? <laughs> we need to work, don't we? But you know when you're at work and stuff as well and you're like, I just can't overcome this thing that's going on in front of me, you know? And then if you're anything like me, you start speaking in tongues, right? And then and then, I'm like, I'm sure that's Holy Spirit saying to the Father, you know, like, just, God, do a little miracle just now, you know? So, so Darren can overcome this thing that's going on in work, you know? Paul said that he speaks in tongues continually. He said that, that tongues are the, speaking in the spirit or in the spirit's language, is part of our spiritual warfare. It's how we fight off demons that are trying to ruin our lives and draw us away from God. Paul says that we should all pray in tongues as much as we can. It also says that we should all prophesy, by the way. I didn't really know how to respond today until I got here, and I was like, you know what's best? I think what's best is if, is if we stop thinking we know everything and allow the Spirit to speak on our behalf today. Because you know when I pray in English, that's me thinking I know everything, right? That's me thinking I can control everything. And when I can't control something, I ask God, to, ask God to control it for me. Right? <laughs> Whereas it, when we pray in the Spirit, we're saying, Spirit, you know what's best for me. You're in control. You're in authority. You have equal authority with the Son and the Father. And so today, once again, I give you authority. Kira bushakari, yapo shandara botaya. 
you can speak on my behalf because you know best. Right? Jesus, you know better than me. You have all authority. So where you choose to guide me this week, I'm actually going to follow. I'm going to say yes, where in the past I've said no. Right? We're all Christians today, right? Jesus, I'm going to let you guide me through my week. Spirit, I'm going to let you speak on my behalf. Father, I'm going to trust the structures that you've put in place for me. Because who has authority? He has authority. Do I want to give him my authority over me? Yeah, I want to give him my authority over me. You can have it. And the first place I can start is by stopping speaking in English today and start speaking in the spirit and saying, here you go, you have authority over my words and the things that I'm praying for. This week, as part of my discipleship journey and getting closer to you, Jesus, I'm going to start saying yes. This week, I'm just going to try and do what you say and do what you did. I'm going to try and let you guide me because I'm giving you authority in my life. Who's up for that? I'm up for that. But he might ask me to stop doing something that I use as a crutch. You know, when the world take the mickey out of Christians, right? And they say, I promise I'm going to stop after this. Um, they say that we use Jesus as a crutch and that we're weak and we need Jesus to be our crutch. First of all, I'm like, hey, yeah, not denying that. I definitely need Jesus to be my crutch, right? But what are the other options? This week, your options are alcohol, drugs, work, sex, or Jesus. What are you going to choose to be your crutch? Right? I'm scared of giving Jesus authority in my life this week because he might tell me that I need to put down another crutch called alcohol. Here's what God said as we were worshipping. Today, some people in this room, in this space, online, hello online, um, we're going to go from one degree of glory to another today. We're going to make a decision to step up. We're going to make a decision to step up, okay? Step up to another level. Another level of giving away authority in our lives to Jesus. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to speak in tongues. Because that's the first way in which we can give over authority to the Spirit. If we're giving authority over to God, then that's the first way that we can do so. Then tomorrow, being Monday, when he says to you, do this instead of this, it's at that point that you're going to go, ha, huh, yeah, okay. Because my walk starts on Monday, not on Sunday. Sunday is easy as a Christian, isn't it? Because we've already got God in our minds and we're always already thinking, am I a good Christian or bad Christian? Sunday's really easy. You should be thinking the same on Monday. Am I a good Christian, bad Christian? We're all just Christians. We're all just failed attempts at being godly. Failed attempts. you know. And we, we fail and then we try again. And we try again and we try again. You, you know, when you're trying to quit smoking and you chuck away your packet of 20 cigarettes that cost you 90 quid and then you're like, I'm never going to smoke again. And then the next week you pick up a packet of cigarettes for 90 quid and you smoke one. Then what happens? Oh, I failed. I might as well smoke this whole packet. No, 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 no. You've smoked one. You've not totally failed. Chuck away the other 19. That cost you 90 quid. Chuck away the other 19. You had a hiccup. You didn't fail. Is that a hand up? Oh, stretching. Okay. <laughs> you didn't fail. You had a hiccup. Who's ready to stop using crutches in the world and worldly crutches, demonic crutches, and start relying on Jesus some more? Anyone? Yeah, come on. 
We can start by speaking in tongues and saying, Jesus, you have all authority. Shall we stand? Um, we're only going to have one worship song in a few moments, but before we do, we're going to, we're going to um, allow Holy Spirit to minister to us. And we're going to do so by, um, can we split up into pairs or threes? We're just going to pray in tongues together. You're going to pray for them in tongues and then they're going to pray for themselves in tongues. And you're like, I've never spoken in tongues before. I'm really scared. Yeah, join the crew. We're all the same. You know, praying in tongues is one way that we die to ourselves daily. We die to ourselves when we speak in tongues. We feel like we're being a right plum. I still do. Been a pastor for like 10 years. Still feel like a plum. Still feel like, oh man, am I doing it right? <laughs> am I doing it right? I don't know. Ain't got a clue. But I do it anyway. Why? The Bible said so. The Bible said so. So, why don't you grab someone or two people, be brave, start speaking in tongues. You pray for them in tongues and then pray for yourself in tongues. Okay? And you'll be thinking something in English in your head and Holy Spirit will either listen to you or he won't. But it doesn't matter because we're giving him the authority. And we won't worship until we've all spoken in tongues. Is that cool? You're like, why did I come here today? Why is it making me do this? Because it's good for you. Because it's good for you. I promise you it's good for you. My shame dissipates when I speak in tongues. Tongues edifies me as a person. It makes me feel good about myself. Even though to do so makes me feel like a bit of a plum. You can gather at any point. Is everyone in their pairs? Everyone in their group, groups? Go on, let's gather. I'm going to speak in tongues over the microphone so that the people online can join in. If you're online and want to join me in speaking in tongues, then you can do so. Just start speaking it out. Speak it out loud. And, uh, and be brave, you know? Like, don't, you can whisper under your breath in tongues if you want. Some people do, that's cool. But you can just start speaking in tongues as I start speaking in tongues. And if you're online, then pray in tongues for me first and then pray in tongues for yourself. If you're in the room... Pray for each other in tongues and then pray for yourself in tongues. Um, you guys at the back there, you can join in as well. I'll tell you when to hit play, don't worry. Is that cool? Join in. Um, <laughs> that's a good dad voice, weren't it? Get joined in. Um, Kiro do shala ya to bakira da si yere. Halabo shandera pokuda batinda da kuya da salai. Hira do shandera kiyama do sun lokuye. Yes, God, Father, we pray for Debs right now. Jesus, you've got all authority over Debs' life. Holy Spirit, would you move in our life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for uh, Julie right now, who's also online and joining us. Kira Bosha Haliti Sundahara. Hira Bokuma da Isi Obosham Haliti Sunna. Hira di Sida Bokuma da Shala da Sokubasi. Hira Tukuna Mashala Titit Kumasha Tahi. Yes, Lord God, would you heal her body? Hira Bosho and her mind. Kira da Sahalabo. Hira Bakabo to Mada Chiki del Santana Nasahala. Boha la Tiki so Shandara Popatido. Hira Jumalati o for la la si to Maria Tisi to Maki Sumbara Tikuye. Hallelujah. If you're online and you'd like me to pray for you right now, then hit us up in the comments. I'm going to pray for myself if you don't mind. I'm going to pray for me i want it real bad i'm desperate for your authority to take its place in my life give me whatever you want to give me Take away from me whatever you want to take away from me. You have all the authority. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we worship him again?
Are we up for one more song? Yo, did someone shout my name? Go on. To some degree, do you want to come and share? Okay. So, 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 in terms of, in, so if, if it's for the room, then yes. If it's for Adrian, if you can let Adrian know, is that all right? Yeah, yeah, that's cool, yeah. So um, for those of you that are watching online, basically, uh, Jason just asked about interpretation of the tongues. Um, I, um, you carry on over there, by the way. Um, I, uh, we believe in inter- interpretation of tongues. In fact, I think I've interpreted tongues probably two or three times in my, in my time as a Christian. Um, it's, uh, it's, it, it's interesting because um, the Bible does say that we should prophesy. And sometimes when we speak in tongues, we're prophesying as well. Um, not only are we praying, but sometimes we prophesy. Sometimes we praise as we speak in tongues. And so, uh, and so that's, uh, that's an important part of our spiritual gifting. Uh, so you can also pray for the interpretation of tongues so that when pastor stands on the stage and starts speaking in some uh, totally foreign language uh, and you, uh, you want to know what he's saying, then you can sometimes understand that. It's almost like a feeling that you get in your tummy, uh, almost like some words that are coming, rising up within you uh, that re- almost sound like they relate to the tongues that are being spoken. Uh, you're very welcome uh, to give that a go at any point. Um, as you've seen in the room, uh, if it's an interpretation for the room, then that's great. We can do that over the microphone. If it's for an input, if it's for a person individually, then we can um, then we can essentially uh, pray for individuals. So if you still need prayer today, if you're still in need of God doing something in your life and you need someone to pray for you, then grab one of the people close to you and say, "Hey, can you continue to pray for me? I just feel like I just need God's presence in my life today." Hallelujah! Let's keep on doing that. If you'd like to do that, we're going to sing, but you don't have to sing. You can keep on praying. In fact, I want to encourage you to keep on praying. But in the meantime, we're going to put on a song because that's what we do in church. Yo, one second before we put a song on. Go. Yeah, yeah. Come, 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 come. Uh, can we go to camera six? Hello. Um, here. Yeah. I just, I've just had a scripture come to me. It's really profound scripture. It says, even if our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. It can be very, very difficult to receive from the Holy Spirit if you're feeling guilty or ashamed or feeling like God doesn't want to reach into your heart. And I just really feel very, very strongly today, even if your heart condemns you, even if you're ashamed of yourself, or you feel like you've blown it, or you feel like you've gone too far, or you feel like there's something you just can't deal with, your Heavenly Father is so loves you so much more than you love yourself. Yeah. He loves you so much more than your Heavenly Father. He loves you so much more than even your dog. Hard to imagine, <laughs> right? God, God, that great love... Don't let your judgment of yourself stop you from receiving this incredible power because, you know, God is so rich and his love for you is so faithful and so gentle and so empowering and so very different from that we get from our parents. So much richer and more beautiful and more peaceful. And he knows you're going to blow it and he still holds you and loves you if you do blow it. So as we go into worship, you know, if you're having trouble receiving... Just thank God that he loves you despite everything. Just thank God. Just reach deeper in your soul and just embrace his love for you because it's really rich and it's very, very real. Amen, amen, amen. Let's, let's start worshipping. And if uh, you'd like Jules to come and pray for you, I'm sure she is well up for that.